So, okay, you bought my car. Yes, I did. <laughs> and there are many people who are getting out of business, but you are getting more deep into the business. Yeah, I am. And uh, why do you think this was a great move for you? Um, I mean, I think it's still out there is still a lot of business. Mm -hmm. the, just that now, because there's so much drivers out there doing black, now you need to put more hours. Mm -hmm. Like when it started two years ago, like I remember like I used to work like 10 hours, nine hours. So like I used to make like a thousand, eleven hundred just in one day. Yeah. And I wasn't working like 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 today, like today. Mm -hmm. Probably I'm working more than that and probably making like half or a little more than that. It depends how lucky and how many private do you have. But here at LAX, it's so many people that they're doing different things and people doesn't know because they don't interact with other drivers. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of people that they're working with different companies, which I never knew until I started meeting uh, new drivers. And uh, do you mostly work with uh, LAX? So you basically come and pick up from here? Or? So most of the time, yeah. Like, it depends. Like, um, for me, my business has always been LAX. Mm -hmm. I feel like if it's not business in LAX, I don't think it's business in the city. Mm. So that's my perspective, how I see it. You know, like, everybody's different. Like, I have friends that they don't like to come to the airport and they only do, like, right at LA uh, in, yeah, in the city, in the city yeah, yeah. yeah and me like for me it's like it depends what you like you know like it depends like like what's better for you do you usually wait at the at the airport lot LAX lot or? so like when he start doing this like before <laughs> it's so many things like people doesn't know like they come to LAX and you see them waiting for like three four hours and you, yeah. you're like, what's going on? Like, probably it's, it's the business is slow, and it's not. It's just like other people, they're using other stuff that we don't know mm. that they hack into through the system, and they get to the front of the queue all the time. And Uber is like, they know, but they don't do anything. When I start doing this, like I'm telling you, like almost two years ago, I used to wait like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I was getting long trip rides, like yeah. 150, 180, like San Diego, like crazy rides. And they used to come like super fast. And if I didn't like any ride, I just go back to the queue. And after 20 minutes, mm -hmm. I will be back in the front of the queue. Now it's not like that anymore. Like everything is being changing so bad. Like now, like you could be three, four hours in front of the queue. Like I have friends that they've been in front of the queue one to five mm -hmm. for two hours. And they don't get any right. And uh, it is working good for you, right? Do for you, if coming to LAX? Yeah, like for me, yeah. Like for me, it's been working, you know. For other people, it haven't, like it doesn't work for them. But like for me, yeah. Like I always trying to find a way to to make money, you know. What is your acceptance rate? Do you decline rides or you just keep taking any any kind of rides yeah like my acceptance rate right now like i could show you is like it's not like that bad like my cancellation is just like i will show you right now so you see like this just how it, for the for the 30 percent acceptance mm -hmm. rate. exactly yeah so most of the time like i only i i accept most of the trip depend like if it's super busy I won't take any $20, $20 trip, you know, like, mm -hmm. if it's surge and if they give me, like, 20 bucks and then, like, going just one mile for 30, for, because the minimum is, like, 11, 12 bucks. Yeah. So, if it's, like, 35 for one mile, 1.5 mile, like, I do it. But if it's, just, if it's business, if it's busy, but they don't, they're not giving any surge, I wait to get, like, a long ride. So, it, it depends, you know, like, it depends how... You have to see, like, if it's traffic, if you see that it's so hard to go back, for example, if you go to, you're working in the Kia Forum, mm -hmm. and then, like, you see so much traffic, like, if you see that you're going to have troubles going back in the same position that you were, like, probably I would wait for a long ride. That's the most thing that I will do, waiting for a long ride. How much you usually, usually are making a week these, these weeks? So like, I'm honest with you, like I don't make less than three thousand a week. 
God damn. <laughs> <laughs> honest, like honest. Wow. Like honest, yeah. So, is it mostly with Uber and Lyft or? I do like that's the thing. Like, I, most is like Uber, not that like like crazy. Just like a little bit. Lyft is like half Uber, half Lyft. I with my private clients mm -hmm. and all different companies that I'm working with. Got it, got it. Mm -hmm. So the I remember you said that you have friends who when they have clients that they cannot fulfill basically they don't have enough drivers or cars they send it to you and you do the job for them basically right exactly so now I so okay so is other companies were um it's called like one of them is Opoly Opoly Technology Opoly. which is like uh, they're actually they're close by like two miles away from the LAX. And you need to have your own fleet. You, by own fleet, you mean to have at least one car or at least ten cars? No, no, like one car. One you car. could be your own. Owner. Just the thing is, like you have to be the, the owner of your own fleet. Mm -hmm. You can't like if you're working for somebody, mm -hmm. you can't work there. You you have to talk to the owner of the fleet, and they have to sign up for you, so you could work and get rise from from this company. So. If you own your own companies, it's easily because like you just apply, you get all the documents that they're asking for, and then you just um, start working with them. And this, it's almost the same like Uber and Lyft. They start sending you trips to the app, but those are pre-arrangement rides. Mm -hmm. What it means is that they send you the ride one, the day before. Oh, wow. Uh, and you choose the time that you want to work with. Like for me, for example, I just start like from... 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. So they only send me like trips on those times. So, so you choose which which hours you work. I work. Is is it possible to choose the whole day? Like they don't let you usually. It's like they don't let you uh, get a schedule over 12 hours. Got it. Got it. So you have to. It has to be between those 12. Either it's in the morning or the afternoon or the evening. So it depends. Like you could put from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Or from 2 a.m. to 2 p.m. or like me, 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. like four hours, five hours. Because for me, like doing driving with that company, like in the afternoon or like it doesn't make any sense for me because of the traffic. Mm. Uh, do they pay better than Uber does? They they actually they used to before. Now that they seen that the demand with the driver went crazy, they had so many drivers that they lower the rates and now they pay on less less than uber like or, or less than they used to pay probably they will pay around the same like lift like mm -hmm. you could get a ride from here from the airport to downtown la for like 65 bucks something like that that's what Lyft is paying you going there. You do, know? do they also have like uh, similar to Uber and Lyft, like XL, Black XL, SUV stuff? Like so that? yeah, they, they have like they have so they have like because it, that company is divided on four parts. But what I know that is like they you you have like the sedan, mm -hmm. the, the like this one the luxury car, yeah. and then you have the SUV, mm -hmm. and then you could work as a regular Uber and Lyft too. Like they have like they have they, they have that too. Yeah, they have that too. Like so, for they are the only one, the only company that have the TNC permit to pick up. So a lot of people, I don't know if they, uh, have you, if you guys have worked before with Uber and Lyft as a regular. When you go to the lot to pick up an Uber and Lyft, it's a sign in in, the, in another lane that is say Opoly drivers. That's for that company that you could pick up over there too. Wow. And they're the only company that have like permits to to pick up on the lot. Wow, that's. Yeah. I mean, I never. I I don't remember if I heard Opoly before or not, but it looks like I had never heard, or maybe at least I didn't pay attention to it. But I, I, I probably ninety nine percent of the drivers from Uber and Lyft that they go and pick up on the lot, on the regular lot, they haven't paid attention to the. It's a sign where it say Opoly drivers, and is that you could that's where you pick up their drivers too, like the like the same like the Uber and Lyft, like doing regular rides. Do you think uh, what is the percentage of rides weekly they receive from Opoly comparing to Uber, uh, Uber and Lyft? So I feel like now it's different. Like I, like now is how I say business is slow, right? Mm -hmm. But like if you're working with Uber, Lyft, and Opoly and other different company, it's like you're gonna get the same amount of like business. Mm -hmm. 
So it's like it won't be more than Opoly, it won't be more in Uber, it won't be more in Lyft. It's just like in older companies, it's been slowing down. But w w doing a little bit on each one, that's where it's going to help you to fulfill your, your earnings and the week. So from my understanding, as you have your own fleet, you joined uh, Opoly like yourself, right? Mm -hmm. You are now working inside other people's uh, fleet. You, you put your own fleet into Opoly and you have your own, uh, basically, app. Mm -hmm. and, and then you could add drivers, too, on your fleet, too. So, like, if you have, like, uh, five cars and you want to add other drivers, you go there and you say, I want to add my driver. They had to uh, uh, get all the papers that they need to. They're going to open their app, like, it's, like, a new an account. And so, they're going to open the... the, the um, they're gonna open when they sign up for the in the app. They're gonna open a new account, mm -hmm. but all the paper is gonna be transferred from the fleet owner to the driver. So they have it's gonna be mm -hmm. basically it's gonna be all the same information. Yeah. That's like you giving permission to your driver to work with you. So basically like Uber, which gives uh, exactly uh, something like that. Exactly, just like Uber is more like advanced a little bit on that, but yeah, it's almost the same. And how long you have been doing Opoly? Like probably like 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 ten months, yeah. So I work like with Opoly. Then uh, it's another company called like a lot of people don't know Black Lane. Yeah. Which is um, they have they I mean, they have a lot of work. Like they give you like a lot of rights like crazy. But the only problem with Black Lane is that they pay you every month. I heard about uh, Blacklink, but when I tried to sign up to them, they only now they only accept uh, 2020 plus, uh, 2020 and newer cars, and also they accept only electric cars. So okay, so yeah, so now like Blacklink, they changed their policy because now California they want to go green, so they That's want right, basically yeah. they want all the cars being electric. So now I, probably I don't know if the states pushing all these companies like Uber, Lyft and Limo companies that at least they need to have electric cars in their fleet. So now Black Lane, like to be able to open an account with them, you need to have an electric car. That's right. So, yeah. uh, but if you have like, for example, three sedans and two SUV, whatever you have, they're, they're a gas car. If you have the electric car, you, are, you add the electric car first and then you could add your other vehicles to the fleet. Oh, wow. So the main point is that to be able to open that account, you need an electric vehicle. That's the first vehicle that you're going to use to sign up on the company. Wow. So did you sign up yourself? Do you have a Blackland account or you work with someone? I was work, I work with someone, yeah. I work with someone. And how is it, po um, how is it possible that he put you also into basically into his fleet or how it works because in order from sorry uh, in order uh, to be in someone's fleet the car should be under their name so that it is the, the, the one tcp basically one insurance but how do they do it with black link with black link is different like they allow you to if 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 i add my with the black link is different because they let you like it doesn't matter like if you you could add other drivers to your fleet even if there are no if you're like the if he's not the owner of the car it doesn't matter the only thing that black lane needs is the is the is the um the insurance the insurance that black lane is added on the insurance oh. so like for example like he could add me as a his driver in his own company but on my policy of my insurance it need to say that black lane is in the insurance too like in case in an accident or anything and like that. What is the coverage for Black Lane? Is it like the lowest seven hundred fifty thousand? The seven hundred fifty thousand, yeah. That's the minimum requirement, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it. Yeah. And uh, do you get a lot of rides from Black Lane? They do get a lot. Like the only problem with that is that you get paid every month. Do they have a limit? For example, during month maybe you could do, you could make twenty thousand dollars. Bro, or... I swear to you, I seen people that you're gonna believe me but like over a hundred thousand like because like per the, month per, but, but, but not from one driver ah but you yeah, mean the fleet owner the fleet oh, owner right. because all the money that you're making is going through the fleet owner 
So, oh, so it is so, similar to the Uber Black. Yeah, yeah, something like that. The only thing is that they want, they want, they're going to pay you every freaking month, you know? So, like, you have to wait for that. But all the money that you're making is going to the fleet owner. And the only thing that a lot of people doesn't know that is that most of the fleet owners, they're getting a percent of the ride that you're doing. They get a percentage of the right yeah. that you do. Yeah. So, for example, like if like it depends. Is I don't know. Is 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 depending on of the deal that you have with the fleet owner. That's why they is a business for the fleet owner too, because like if I give you a ride, mm -hmm. I say okay, coach, I'm gonna charge you twenty percent for that ride. I'm paying you, like it's gonna be eighty bucks, but I'm gonna take twenty twenty percent of my cut, and you're gonna be getting right every day. So that's usually what they do. Now, Kosh, if you do 60 right in a week with me, I'm only going to take 15% or 10%. So it depends how many rides do you do for the owner that he's going to be eating, he's gonna be cutting your, the, the percent of the... They, they receive all the money and then they, they take their part and send the rest to you or uh, they actually work with Black Lane that where, for example, they, they can choose... I will receive 20% cut from from this driver and uh, you you only see the money that you made but you see it uh, already deducted that percentage or you see for example you made $100 and then in the back of your head you know that $20 or 20% goes to to the fleet owner so it depends okay it's it's a little confusing so for people that so you guys learn this because probably they won't tell you this is that if I'm the owner of the of the fleet, right? Mm -hmm. I could choose if you see how much you're getting you getting and getting paid for that ride. So like like I could like if I have five drivers and I say okay, coach is my my best friend and I trust you, I'm on the I'm gonna just let you to see what ride how much you're getting how much they paying for that ride. So the other drivers, they can't see how much they're getting for that ride. So for the other, because they see you, they, it's supposed to be like partners, but it's like an employee thing. It's like, mm. it's like, uh, it's confusing, man. Because like how I say, like if, if I had a ride for 200 bucks, I could say, okay, they paying 180 for that ride. Mm -hmm. And you don't know how much you're getting charged because I send you the trip. So that's the other thing that the owner of the fleet, he choose or where to send, who, whose driver is, is going to send the ride. Okay, so and they don't tell you how, I mean, they want to tell you, okay, for this ride, they paying 70 bucks. You want it or not? And you say yes. But probably in that ride, he's making, he's getting paid 90 bucks. And he's telling you that it's only 70 bucks. Wow. And from those 70 bucks, he's going to say, okay, you remember that? You, oh, I got to take 15% of wow. that. Wow. Uh -huh. And a lot of people do and know that. Yeah. But I got... My friend, that uh, which he's working there, like he told me everything about it, what they do there, and like most drivers they don't know. That that's actually crazy to think about that they they could basically. Hide. It looks like it is similar to a private client. For example, mm -hmm. I have private private client. I cannot fulfill it, right? I call you, for example. Hey, mm -hmm. I have a private client going from point A to point B. It is fifty dollars or hundred dollars, right? But I know in the back of my head that the client is paying me $150, mm -hmm. but I'm only telling you it is $100. And from that $100, I'm still getting percentage. So that's that's another, excuse my French, like a f the par of, mm -hmm. of the limousine company. Like, you never know who are you working with, you know? Like, it's crazy how many people screw mm -hmm. their own drivers and their friends for money like it's it's insane like like they make you think like oh i take care of you like you're my friend like if I, like me i have so many friends coach that's why I, I know like about so many things and if i have a private client like me if i have a private client and i'm getting paid 150 i give them i tell them like pay to the driver mm -hmm. i don't want any cut because you're doing me a favor for something that i can't do because I wanna have an I wanna be in a good agreement with my with my customer with my client you know, and for me I don't see it like a, oh I gonna become millionaire like taking twenty bucks for each driver you know, mm. but other like other people they don't think like that and that and of course that's how they make their money too you know it's a business, 
you know, but for like how I see it, like I don't I don't think is 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 fair, you know, mm -hmm. especially because it's like. Everything is getting expensive. The cars, like the maintenance, the gasoline is getting so high. So taking a cut from a ride where when everything is getting so expensive, like it doesn't make anything. I don't think it's fair for the drivers, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you could be given like a break, you know, and then say, you know what, like, bro, do this right for me. Just take the money and that's it. And I know what the next time when I call him, he's going to be there. But that's the problem here, too, that so many people, fleet owners they've been screwing their drivers that now nobody want to work with them because of that so basically they are two uh you you said mentioned two different companies uh like Opoly. Opoly and black lane black lane is there any any other company that you work with it's another or? one called uh is, is this one called is one called transfer i don't i don't know the website of that one But I know this one is called, uh, so this is called DRVN. This is another app. DRVN. DRVN. Dot, Those another dot com. com. DRVN dot com. Mm -hmm. That company is the same thing. They pay you every month. The only good with, with the only good thing with Opoly is that they pay you every week. That's the only company that they pay you every week. And this DRVN dot com also pays monthly. So yeah, the monthly. And Black Lane also pays monthly. Monthly. Yeah, the same. Because this company, I believe they're from, they're not in the U.S. Oh, they are not based in the U.S.? Yeah, they're not based in the U.S. They're like in, I don't know, in Europe. I don't know where, but like. The, did you have any ride with the, the RBN? Or you just know that they do this? I just know that I haven't, I, I, I signed up with them, but I never, like, if I'm honest with you, like, I never uh, work with that company. I know, like, friends, they work with them, but mm -hmm. I haven't done any ride. I, what I have done rides is with Black Lane and Opoly. Those two companies, yeah. Which one? Which one of the company do you like the most? If you have money saved, mm -hmm. if you have like, if you're by yourself and you have like twenty thousand on the side, I know that it's a lot of money. But if you have twenty thousand on the side, and where you could pay all your expenses to keep yourself for one month on six weeks, Black Lane is a good. Um, uh, it's a good company to work with because you have work all the time that they send you rides for like 12 hour shift mm -hmm. which like for if you have an SUV they paying 85 bucks per hour wow. and I'm telling you they, they give you like 12 hour and, and it's plus the tip that they give you in cash mm -hmm. and you pick up a lot of famous people too like you could get actors actress like rappers like whatever you know and with Opoly For a short term, Opoly, because you get your money every week. So it's like one week deposit. So you get it like in the second week, but still like your money is going to be there every week. Got it. So if we, we put it on the scale, basically, the first one goes the uh, black lane. The second one, you prefer Opoly than Uber. Yeah, like like for, for, a, for, a, for a long term, like black lane. Opoly... Just for a short term, but like not for a full time job. It's just ah, like like yes. a part time something. Black lane you could do it as a full time, but like the thing is like when you open your own limo company, you need to be in different games. You know, like you mm. need to have different like Uber, Lyft. Like some people they been deactivated with Uber and they only have Lyft, so they have Opoly, they have Black Lane, so. You gotta like when you're in this business, like you can't be just in one company. Mm -hmm. Like if you really want to make money, you gotta be talk to people and because a lot of people that they working with companies that you don't even know, and they're making a lot of money, a lot of money. And uh, you said you make at least three thousand. Yeah, <laughs> a week. Yeah, yeah. Like on it. But now, how I say I'm working more than before. You know, like. Mm. I'm putting more hours. I I know that like a lot of people doesn't have the time to to know you know because like before I, I you you could work six hours and you could make five hundred bucks like easily. Now it's not like that anymore. Probably you're gonna work like ten eleven hours. I have friends like in a bad day I could make five hundred. My friend make eight hundred bucks, nine hundred bucks. It depends how lucky you are too, man. Like I feel like this is about being lucky too, you know, being in the right place. 
and being disciplined, you know, working every, every day. And uh, one more interesting question, I would say, do you, why do you prefer sedan over SUV? <laughs> a lot of people, <laughs> even like a lot of, I got friends that they asked me, Kevin, like, why you don't get your SUV? Like, I had one before, but like for me, how the business is, for me, doesn't make any sense to have a SUV. Because mm -hmm. if you're doing Uber and Lyft, most people, when they pay for a black, you're paying for a sedan. Yeah. You're not paying for a SUV. But the thing is, like, people is getting that bad uh, habit where when they paint a black, they expect a SUV. SUV yeah. And, you know, and it's, and it's not like that. Especially how business it is now. Like, imagine, like, if I'm investing 25000 for a car and you're investing sixty or 70000 for an SUV and you, most of the trip that you're getting are black, I could make the same money that you make in an SUV. Of course, you will have more clients. Sometimes you get a, a lot of clients in the SUV, but it's not like that all the time. I have friends that they have SUVs and they don't. And I have more clients than them. You know, so like, and this is something that I'm gonna be honest, guys. Like, like the car, it doesn't matter. Like, of course, you have to try to keep your car clean and everything. But the car doesn't matter. They paying for a service. Mm. They are not paying so on just for the car. They paying for a good service. So if you're good with with the passenger that you have in your in your car, you are polite. You have a, the water. You you treat them like good. They're gonna say, "Wow, this guy is nice. I want him." You know, and they're gonna call you back. It doesn't matter if they if they if they get like a escalate, mm. and you know, like if the driver on the escalate is not well dressed. And he doesn't have the car clean, anything like that. They wanna prefer me than the the Escalade, and it happened all the time, you know. So like for me, it doesn't matter what car you have, you know. Like it's just it's the pain of the driver. And uh, also, especially uh, Cadillac XDS, they have uh, a lot of room. You can put a lot of luggage in the trunk, yeah. And also legroom in the back seats. I mean, they are one of the best, I would say. Yeah, but like how I say this, like people, they love this car. Like it's so room, comfortable, like it's smooth. Mm -hmm. Like when you drive on the freeway in the city, like people say, wow, like I didn't know this car was so comfortable, you know? And then when you see the car clean, they see like you have like something for them, like quiet, like they say, oh my God, this guy, like I really feel comfortable here than, you know? and. And that's when you see, like, he's not about the car, mm -hmm. too. It's just, like, the driver, how he's, like, keeping everything super comfy for the passenger, you know. So, because most of the passengers that you're going to be getting, they're business people, you know. Yeah. So, they just want to be relaxed. They don't want to, they don't want to be bothered, you know. Sometimes they're going to talk to you. So, most yeah. of the time, they're just going to be quiet and just want to have their water, listen to their music, be in a comfort school, whatever, and just let the be, you know. And then, like, they say, wow, like, thank you. I have my chair. You're here, like... Oh, here's 20 bucks, here's 30 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever. Like, I had customer like, I pick up at LAX and I just take them to the 7-Eleven here on the corner and they give me a hundred bucks, you know? Wow. And it's like, oh, <laughs> and, just, and it's not the car, it's the service, you know, like that you give them. They're like, hey, can I stop here? Like, yeah, it's fine, you know, like just, you got to talk to people sometimes, just feel their energy, you know, feel their vibe. Like if you see that they have a bad attitude, you just let it be, you know? If you see that they want to talk to you, you talk to them, you know, it's, it's, it's how you interact with the customer. That's the key to be successful in this business and put a lot of hours. Like if you don't feel comfortable driving and you're in a bad mood, it's better if you stay home. Mm. You know, I, that's like, that's what I always say, you know, if you don't feel like in a good mood driving, like just stay home because then you're going to be treating your customer like and they paying for a, for a service, you know. So, how many hours do you think you work a week, bro? Like, if I'm honest, like it's like sixty hours at minimum. Least. Yeah, minimum at least sixty hours. Yeah. So, of which in those, like probably half of that time is active, mm. active hours. So, you, do you, do you have any days off? For example, uh, some people they work six days, one day off, no matter. So. For example, I usually take the day off. I, I work the, the, like the most, like most people, like they take the off, like the day off, like Tuesday, Wednesday. 
I don't take those days off. Sometimes I make more money on a Tuesday and Wednesday than on a Friday or a Saturday. Uh-huh. I swear to you. Because a lot of people take the, the Tuesday and Wednesday, Wednesday off. Another thing is like the holiday. People forget that like most people, they take the holiday off. Like for me, I don't have holiday off. Like like I work on those days. Because like for me, make, working a holiday, holiday, bro, like I could make more money. So, for example, if I'm working a holiday, I could make 900 bucks. And all the, the people that take that day off, they start working the next day and they only make 200. Mm. I could take the, the next day. For me, it's just a day. Mm. You know, like, it's not like I don't need to take that day. And I tell my family, you know, like I say, like, you know what, like, I'm going to work in the holiday, but we could do something the, the next day. So it's like, you don't see a lot of people in the restaurant. Like, I mean, it's a business, man. It's, it's whatever you feel likely, you know, like, for me, holidays is something that I'm always working, you know. Most of the time, if I don't travel. <laughs> How many cars do you have? I have three. And yeah. With, have, with this one, three? Yeah, with this right. one, three. So I have two Cadillacs and then the Lexus. Mm-hmm. And I have another car, but that one I rent to like a regular, a Canary. Okay, okay. and live. So yeah. what kind of Lexus do you have? Uh, ES. ES hybrid. So, but uh, Got it, but it doesn't go to black, right? It, no anymore. No, Before no. it used to. Do you rent it out or? What's that? Do you rent it out? Yeah, all of those are rent. Yeah. So you rent the ES because it qualifies with Blackland and Opoly or? So that one actually qualify for for even for Blackland it qualify and it qualify for I mean it used to qualify for Uber Black, no anymore but still in the fleet. If you haven't take out if so if you had that car before they update the list in Uber Black. The car is still there. Like, they won't remove really? it. Yeah, they won't remove it. So, it, that car is still in, in your Uber Black Fleet? Yeah. And it, mm-hmm. it still receives a ride? Yeah, they won't remove it. Yeah, they can remove it. Yeah, I have a friend that she has a N- NKC, the hybrid one, the Lincoln. Mm-hmm. And that one it used to be in the black list, and now they took it out because they, they, they switch a lot of... They did a lot of change. They they took out a lot of sedans from from the Uber Black. So. But but it's interesting that even though they changed the rules, basically the the cars that qualify, they they don't touch the cars that used to be qualified. Exactly. Yeah, they leave it there until expire. Like because when, you know mm. that it's only seven years. Yeah. So after the seven years, you forget it. That you won't be able to put that car anymore. Now, like, it changed, like, a lot of people don't say know this, but now, I don't know if you, you know the, ta- the Tahoe, like, the Chevrolet the, Tahoe. Tahoe, yeah. Uh, Tahoe. Yeah. That one applied just for Uber Black, right? Yeah. Now it changed. They added for SUV. And they lot, added uh, Tahoe. Yeah, for SUV. Here in LA. And here in LA, yeah. And it's not on the list. Like, if you guys go to, to if you guys go into the uh, Uber Black list in, 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 in the Uber account, like, in LA, Los Angeles, in Tahoe, it doesn't say, but... My okay. friend, she, I, she showed me like Kevin. Look, I my my SUV now qualify for, for a SUV, and she has a Tahoe. Tahoe. Did, did she change any documentation? Nothing. It, they just added. Now they, they uh, I don't know if you hear about the Wagoneer, the Jeep Wagoneer. Jeep Wagoneer yeah. That one they added for SUV too, for black and black. It, that one it, it wasn't for for black. Now it's, you could do black and black SUV. And you know, like the uh, the Lincoln MK MKC, like the one that looks where they put the bodies in the trunk, like it's too oh, long. Oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. That one it was only for black. Yeah. Now they change switch for SUV too. <laughs> really? Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. They now it's added to SUV. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's, and and like uh, let me okay, let me see if I could show you. I think I have a picture. Let's let me see. Well, yeah, like a lot of people doesn't know, and they and they did it like probably like three three weeks ago. All, the, did, all these changes they did it two weeks ago. Yeah, three three weeks ago, and they didn't say anything, bro. Like this guy. That's crazy. The Tahoe, especially. The and Tahoe the, now oh. you could do SUV with that one, bro. Crazy. Like. Wow. <laughs> oh, you know which one too? Oh, it was the NKT M NKT NKT? Yeah. Look. So do you see this one? Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So like people like they see that one. Now they that one it used to apply just for black. Now it switched to SUV. Look. 
Uh, it's right here, in KT. In KT. Yeah, MK, MKT. Mm -hmm. 2017 and up goes to over black SUV. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they don't cost a lot of money. No, no, like you could find one of those. For, I don't know. I don't know if they were built until 2019 or 20. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, but they, that are, one, they are discontinued. They, they are discontinued. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if the last one was made on 19 or 20. But that one, like, definitely you could, like, you could get it for, like, 22, 25,000. And you actually could do black and SUV, but uh, it's, uh, it's I mean, I mean, that car is not a SUV, I would say. I mean, I, I mean, it doesn't have that, that much space. It doesn't have that much space rooms. Like, I don't know why they did that, but it's like, like, I don't know why they did that. Like, if I, but and now here, you see the Wagoneer. It's yeah. black and, 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 and black, black SUV, SUV yeah. and that one wasn't on the list. That one they didn't have it to do for black, and now they added. Be why? Because that one because it's electric. I think that one we need is electric. So, but yeah. So it's a lot of things that they've been changing in Uber too, and a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. Got it. So you decided to buy XTS. Mm -hmm. Why didn't buy MKT to to have an SUV option too? Like, if I'm honest, like I don't like that car, man. I mean, they they look ugly. <laughs> they look ugly. Yeah, like if I'm honest with you, like I don't, I don't, I don't like that car. And like XTS is a full size sedan. It's comfortable to drive. That one is more like long car, like the the MKT. MKT yeah. yeah, and this is like I see, like I don't, I don't see myself driving that car. When people see XTS, like oh my god, they like the car just to see the body of the car. They're like wow. And how I say, guys, like you don't need to have a lot of money to to. To start your 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 Uber Black account, like you could get a, a like a nice car with in in a good price and start your business. You know, those are like you had to pull a lot of hours. How much do you rent your cars out? Six hundred. Six hundred a week. Oh, Six hundred a week. Yeah, even with the Lexus. So yeah, I, I I have I know people they charge like six fifty, five fifty, depend like. It depends like what company do you have with, but like usually like like me I charge six hundred. I have a friend that he charge six fifty. I think six hundred is a good mm -hmm. price for for it's, a sedan. Look guys, it's hybrid. Like you're gonna save yes, so much yes. money. Like to fill up that tank, it's like forty five, fifty bucks and it's like give you like five hundred miles. Does it take premium or it takes regular gas? It does take a regular gas. Regular and, gas. And what year is it? That one is a twenty twenty one. Mm -hmm. Wow. When I got it, like, yeah, two years ago. Why don't you drive it? Because, like, my friend, like, like for me, so, okay, the, the driver that they're working with me, like, they just start, you know, and, and like, he just started, like, so for me, giving it the Lexus, i helping him to save money and gas. Mm. That's the only reason that I'm doing it, to help him. But do you prefer a Lexus over XCS? Ah, man, like, uh, I mean, like, uh, both are good. Like, I can't say, like, the only, like, the only good thing about the Lexus is the, is the, is the gas. Like, you say morning gas. But, like, like, both are a really great car. And I, I can't, like, it's too hard to put me to choose between, because I start with my Lexus and, like, Lexus, like, I haven't any complaint of that. And with the XTS, it's super comfortable to drive to. I don't have any complaint on this car. But, it's just the gas is the difference. The yeah, I, th that's why I always uh, say that if XDS was a hybrid, it would be the best car. It would be the is. best car. Definitely would be the one of the best car. If just to change the hybrid system or the the drive drivetrain from XDS uh, and basically take it from Lexus and put it here mm -hmm. with this comfort, with this uh, sound system, with everything that XDS provides. If it was a hybrid, it would be the best car out there. Yeah, yeah. And the only thing that the Lexus, that one, the GS, doesn't have the room that the XT has. Yeah, has. the room doesn't have Yeah, it. yeah no. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's something that you can't beat on the XTS. It's yeah, yeah. really difficult to see a nice sedan like this one that have good run. Like, like I don't think it's any car that have a good run like this one. Yeah, I, I do believe that. And uh, we are not only talking about the rear seat. The mm -hmm. trunk, the trunk it is yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and super huge. I never had any problem with the luggage, but I know never. people who who have, for example, BMW 5 Series, 
the have problem with mm -hmm. the, with, <laughs> with the luggage because it's the way how they build the the trunk yeah you know so and, and this one is more like like yeah. It goes deep. Yeah, deep yeah, it there, goes yeah. deep, exactly. And the BMW, it doesn't, it's like kind of yeah. weird how they build it. How I say, like the XTS, like I never have it. Like people even, it's crazy. Like when I open the trunk, they see like, damn, <laughs> like, wow, like, because they bring so many luggage and they yeah. get scared because, you know, people sometimes, like when they order a sedan, it's for people and all of them are bringing luggage. And then like, oh my God, they see that car and they say, oh my God, I don't think it's gonna fit all yeah, the luggage. Yeah, and, then, and when they see me like, I'm very like confident, like they say, hey, how are you guys? And then I open the trunk and it's like, they're just like, oh, like this guy doesn't say anything. And I say, like, oh, let me, and when they see the trunk, they see like, damn, like this is big. I say, no guys, don't worry. Like you could put probably three, four bodies in there. Yeah, oh, easily, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> easily. Yeah, that, that's the best. The best thing that uh, unfortunately they don't do it anymore. I mean, yeah, the, the, it's, I, I wish they they made it more and more, but I don't think why why it is not that popular that they discontinued. But uh, I, it looks like it was built for limo. Yeah, yeah. And Cadillac in their time in the old age, they used to be like Cadillac was the like the best like people you see a Cadillac and they were like damn like he's working for a mob like he's yeah. working like <laughs> like like with the mafia like like even like like rich people everything was was about Cadillac you know and especially it's, it's not only the way how it drives it's just in the way how it looks mm -hmm. like how you just say it's like the Cadillac the XTX built like for like a limousine like for like driving a limousine but the car is so nice, like from the outlook, like it looks so yeah. nice. Like even if you don't have a limousine company, like the car is still nice to drive it because people is gonna look in your car. Like when they see the car, they say, "Wow, like that car is so beautiful," because the body shape, bro, is 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 really well made. You know, like the look is beautiful. And uh, especially this new design, uh, the look in the in the front is my favorite part. How the, oh, yeah. the headlights turn mm -hmm. on. And the bars that goes yep. on the side. I mm -hmm. mean, looks amazing. The, this is something that I miss definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Kevin, uh, basically buying this car, you, it was not cash. It was um, a little bit interesting. Mm -hmm. It was not regular auto loan. Mm -hmm. It was something uh, I would say special that mm -hmm. you somehow pull pull it off. <laughs> could you briefly explain how you did it so maybe there are other, other people who could uh, take advantage of this yeah. option yeah yeah of course so okay so um it's it's like i don't know if you heard about the sva loans sva like, loans mm -hmm. yeah, small business association okay. or administration something yeah so it's some companies that they're working out there like which i will give you the the information later on so you could add on your youtube like on your channel where these people they help you to get like um a commercial loan mm -hmm. okay so when you start your own company that's the most hard part because like you think when you open your uh, commercial um account your bank account and all that you think that you're gonna apply for a credit card or, like that you're gonna apply for a commercial loan and you're gonna and they're gonna give it to you mm -hmm. and it's not like that so this company, like the, the, where I went, like these guys, like they really helped me. Like they make sure they talk to the bank for you, and they make sure that you're gonna pay that loan back. Mm. So usually, like if you wanna buy a car from a dealership or, or like a private party, they're gonna help you to get the commercial loan. They're gonna check the price and everything that the the value of the car and everything. If they see that you could get approved because the most important thing guys is that you need to have earnings like if you're not making money you don't have proof to show them show them that you want to pay the loan how many months do you need to prove of just income? like three months like it's just like is like it, is it business earnings business earnings yeah mm -hmm. so like what i recommend like people could do right is that if you're working for somebody like get the money that you're making and transfer. Tra once you get that money on your bank, transfer that money to your business company. Mm. Like even if you are, if you don't have your own fleet, get your LLC, open your your business account, and the money that you put in on your regular account, transfer that money 
to the business account. Business account. So once they, because when they ask you like the, the like the, the last three months of their, like you, you're gonna show them, okay, this is what I've been making. This is what I've been paying every week for this car that I'm renting. So you show them like you really could pay for, you could afford for the, for the vehicle. So they wanna talk for the bank. They, go, they will talk to the bank for you and they will get you approved. And it's like, it's not that complicated. At the beginning, I was looking that it looks complicated, but it's not. Like they, 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 if they get, if they say that they're gonna, if they say that they could help you, it's because you're gonna get approved. They see like your statements, your taxes, and when they see, okay, this guy could pay for it. Like if, if they won't waste your time. How did you find them? For a friend. Like this friend, like is very smart. Like his name is Carlos. Like um, he told me, no, oh, no, Kevin. Like you could, you could get like a small business, uh, a, a small um, business loan. And I was like, how, bro? Like I don't think because I, I try. You know, when I went to, I wanna buy a SUV the first mm. time. Like they told me, like you don't have, to me. yeah, yeah, you don't have credit. Like what the hell are you doing here? Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. you have to put like twenty, thirty thousand down payment and. And sometimes they don't even give it the, the loan to your business. They're gonna give you to a personal credit. They yeah. still would get what they still would get you the commercial vehicle, but it won't be under your business. It's gonna be under your name, mm. because it's more it's easier for the dealer to approve you with your personal credit than the, the business credit. You know, and that's not the way to go. And uh, this SBA loan that you got, uh, do you have a, a personal guarantee or it is? only for a business like so so like they only charge you like a fee they charge you like six hundred dollar fee and they give you like the 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 uh the percent that you're gonna like so for example now because the ap the percent is high yeah you're gonna be paying like eight percent um but you're only gonna pay them like six hundred bucks for the for everything that they're doing but they give they give the check to the dealer and and the good thing like so the the way that how you get approved is that they give the check to you like the private party or the dealership and then they will put your car under your company name and the lion holder is going to go through this uh, company that is helping you so if you don't pay the vehicle the lion holder like so you so the the the, the title is going to be under your company name Mm -hmm. But the lion holder is from the peop from this uh, company that are they're giving you the money. Oh wow! So well, I thought that the the lien holder will be SBA. No, the, it will be the company that help you get that loan. I mean, yeah, it, it, they're part of the SBA. So it's like, oh. yeah, they're part of the SBA. They work with the SBA. So it's not like like you're doing with a third party. Like they still working for the SBA, just that like they they get their commission for doing that extra job, you know. But they work with the SBA. It's a SBA program. Mm. Yeah, the same. Just like the SBA program, they have so many people working for them all around the U.S., you know? So they have their own company, but they're, working with, they're still working with, for the SBA. Just like they, they, if they just want to make sure that you're going to pay the car. So that's why they put the, the lion holder through them. But it's almost like... And uh, it, your loan is for two years, right? Two years. So, yeah. They give it you for like two years and like paying like 850 a month. If you want to pay before, you pay before. Like, like if you're working hard, guys, like I'm telling you, if you're making 3,000 a week, you could pay the loan in less than a year. So that's like, like how I say, like if you're gonna help, if you're gonna start your company, right, and you and you get this loan because how I say, you don't need to have a lot of credit either. Okay, your credit score could be in the 650. Doesn't matter. You don't need to need. You don't need to have like a seven or eight hundred score. Right. Wow. Yeah, with six fifty, that they don't care. Even if you have a bankruptcy in the last two years, they could help you too. They don't. They don't. They don't. And uh, you said that they take two percent, right, from the loan amount. Yeah, the, exactly. The company that mm -hmm. helps to do it, they take two yeah. percent from loan amount, no matter uh, how much the loan is. Yeah. They only two. Two only two percent, and that's it. Yeah. And like how I say they. Like that, like the, the you always like how I see like how I see it is like if you pay the loan, it doesn't matter if you pay in the time that they give you or on the less time, that's gonna help the credit or your company mm. because next time when you go to a bank or whatever, now they're gonna see that you have credit, and that's the, like you you won't believe me how many people 
they're buy their their cars through their personal credit and their business doesn't have any credit at all mm. because it's so important that you have to do everything by like by the book like try to do everything on the right thing i know like some people are desperate and they can't wait but everything is a process and like if you get a person like a business loan through your company bro you made it because next time it's gonna be way easier to get a, a another loan for your business because now you have credit mm -hmm. and then they know you're paying and how much do you pay for your insurance so okay so i i, I do have viber and i'm paying like 750 with them 750 per for, car per car yeah and uh 750 is it because you have three car and it's discounted or it always was 750 even when you had Bef one car it, it wasn't it wasn't like when i start with with viber like i was I, the first i it was like 950. Mm -hmm. after the year that they saw i didn't have any accident and i add the other vehicle like they say oh you want to be paying because i i, I send them an email about that quote adding other vehicle and when they give me the quote it was less than than what it was paying for so I, for example with the two with the only with my Lexus I was paying 900 bucks and then when I add the other vehicle it went down to 800 and 800 for mm -hmm. each car and then when I add the third vehicle it went down to 750 each one so it, they lower my the the monthly of the of the insurance for each car the, the, so 750 is without down payment, right? So no down 12, payment. 12 months? Yeah. So that's a good thing with Viber. It's like you don't have any contract with them. Like you just go and apply. The, like you do the quote online and they're going to tell you how much, how much you're going to be paying for with them, you know. Yeah. Mine was 2800 per month. Damn, bro. <laughs> yeah. I think it, that depends a lot of the age too. Like if mm. you're like under 25, they see it like as a huge risk, you know, because we're talking like you're gonna put like a cover of 750,000. So like if they see like you're a risk, like just because you're too young, that's that's gonna be a, a problem. But like how I say like, Viber one is one of the most easy one, bro, because I hear other companies, they take like, 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 they take like, if they give you like, like 12,000, um, year contract you had to pay like 2500 mm -hmm. uh, down payment you know yeah and a lot of people doesn't have that money you know but for me i was lucky with viber like i didn't have to pay anything for all my pocket and uh from what i know you have your tcp you have you also received your lx permit right mm -hmm. yeah i did mm -hmm. it talks like it that take me like like 10 months to got it you don't have the tracker here no, and this one no because I am waiting for the for get this one through my email. Oh, yeah, got it, got it, yeah. Got it. But the other one, yeah, they have like the other two cars, they have it. Yeah. And uh, also, I wanted to touch uh, a little bit topic about the XTS, the, the car itself. You have one, mm -hmm. and uh, it is at the shop, right? Yeah. It's having <laughs> some uh, problems. So, yeah, I, I I I went for vacation for a whole week, and when I bought that car, the last owner which is a great guy like he he fixed the transmission before selling the car he paid three thousand and five hundred which he paid a lot of money for that like i mean i i didn't know that he paid that until i met him until he told me because i knew him but i didn't know that he was selling his car because he got a suv so when he sold me the car he said kevin like the transmission we i was having some problem with the transmission but I fix it. Like I paid three thousand five hundred. The car is mm -hmm. fine. Blah, blah, blah. When I start driving the car, I start sensing that the transmission was like kind of like, like doing something weird. You know, yeah. it wasn't nothing like bad, bad, bad. But it was like wow, like this transmission is kind of something is going on. I know. I drive cars. I know when the transmission is, is 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 not working. You know, and and then like. I like I was like ah. I called this guy and he say, bro, like I don't think they free, they fix the transmission right. And he say like, oh Kevin, don't worry, like the transmission have um, uh, warrant. warrant, yeah. Take it to the shop, whatever. Which I did, but I did it when I went for vacation. Mm -hmm. So I went for back, I went to vacation for like a whole week, and I say, okay. I know like, 
like how I say, because this guy, he fixed the transmission. I didn't worry about about getting the transmission fixed because they pay a lot of money to fix it. But I know places where you go, you pay less than that. You pay like 2300 2100 and they switch, they change the transmission in a day and a half, you have your car. Mm. So this this body shop where I, like this guy that I know, they have the transmission ready. So they just put, take your transmission down and put the other one that's fixed and that's it, and you leave. So in a day and a half, you have your car. But with this guy, because he, he fixed the transmission in another place, I just left the car and I said, okay, you guys fix it. And then like, I'm gonna be on vacation, something happened, just tell me. So what I got a, a one of my friends, I told him, bro, can you go and pick up the car? Like they said that they fixed it, that they had to restart the computer, which I knew it wasn't that. He f- he take the car, he drive it, and he say, Kevin, the transmission have something. Mm-hmm. And I say like, uh, what what do you mean? No, like I think it's still having the same problem. And I say, and he send it back to the, to the body shop, and the car has been there for like a month. And mm-hmm. and I still and I'm, that's the only thing I'm losing money with like. <laughs> do you know why it is taking so long? They don't want to do the warranty on it. The, uh, like I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't want to be hard on them. Like what they say probably is true, probably is not. I don't know. Like they said that now for the part of the, this Cadillac, like they have to order order the part. Mm. So it's gonna they take like a week or two weeks depending if the part is easy to get or not. So to, for then it took them like two weeks to get the part. The car now they just they say that they fix the car, everything is fixed. Just that they have somebody that have a computer that have, need to reset the computer for the transmission, mm. and that guy having go there because they don't have a guy working in the body shop. They had to call someone to bring their their equipment to reset the transmission so I they could give me my car back. The car is already park and everything but they just need the guy to put the computer like whatever and reset the transmission and the guy having having show up so my car is still there because i had to wait until this guy show up to reset the computer and how many miles uh, did that that car have when you bought it first? so when i bought that one he had one twenty thousand mile a hundred and twenty thousand that's what I was telling you, like these cars probably the the engine they could go for over two hundred, three hundred thousand miles, like without no problems. The problem with the car is like once they reach the hundred K, depending how much how, how how much you take care of the transmission, it's gonna last between the hundred and a hundred and twenty. After that you're gonna have to replace the transmission. Got it. And uh, how much did you buy that car? That one I paid for for that one, seventy thousand. Mm-hmm. Seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it eight two thousand eighteen or nineteen? Uh, that one is nineteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the guy that he he had that car park, he didn't wanna. He he bought an SUV, but he didn't wanna rent that car. He didn't wanna. Mm-hmm. He just have it there. Like he said, Kevin, like just give me this money. Like I just already I already put three thousand five hundred in the transmission. Like the car is in perfect condition too. Like the car is in amazing condition. Like no noise, nothing like that. He really take care of that car because I know him. He's, he's a friend, and he said, "No, can you just give me seventeen thousand and and take the car and that's it." You know, like and that's what. And he's been, he's nice. He's a good friend because he's been calling the body shop. Like, hey, what the hell is going on with the car? Like, why are you guys having fixed the car? And like, he's been pushing them to mm. to get the car back like as soon as possible. That's great. So uh, th- these cars have the uh, basically problem with transmission, and it looks like it close to a hundred thousand miles. They uh, kind of they start failing. They start failing, mm-hmm. and uh, it's good that you know a place where they changed for two thousand five hundred. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So like, um, that's another thing. Like, you gotta be really smart when you buying. Like, you need to know your your your. Um, you need to know what car like or SUV you're gonna buy when you start this business. Because like if you buy a car that's gonna is not reliable, you're gonna spend you're gonna lose money and probably you're gonna lose a lot of money. So 
that's what I, w I was talking to you. Like um, the SUVs, like the GNC Yukon XL and the Chevrolet Suburban from 2015 to 2020, those SUVs, their transmission is six speed. So those transmission are really cheaper to fix. Like this guy, what I told you about it, like he switched, he changed the transmission for like 2,200. Mm -hmm. And he gave it to you in one a day and a half and he gave you six months warranty, like no mileage, like unlimited mileage uh -huh. for six months. And it's not expensive to fix those transmission in those SUV. But if you buy a new SUV, like a 2021, 2022, whatever, whatever like, those transmission are at 10 speed and to fix it you're gonna have to buy it from the dealer mm -hmm. and we're talking about eight thousand dollar or more i don't know probably more yeah probably more got it that's why like like it's nice if you could buy your vehicle brand new bro like it's nice but how is the business right now you wouldn't recommend i don't I recommend no like if I'm honest with you, no. You're like if you're gonna start, start from scratch. You don't need to buy a brand new Suburban, a brand new GNC, a brand new Escalade. Like I don't think you need to do that. Like you could buy a nice car, a 2019, 2020 car, like a sedan that you know that is reliable, and you know you're gonna make good money working in in the city and the airport with that car. I don't recommend. I'm, I'm honest with you. I don't recommend buying an SUV as a as a you can, because that's another thing. Okay, if you don't have the time to do this, and you buy an SUV, you're stuck with the SUV. With a car payment, especially. You're, you're gonna be, yeah, yeah. You're gonna be stuck. Like you, like even if you try to sell it, like you're gonna lose money and you're gonna owe the bank. I don't know how much money you're gonna owe the bank. If you buy your car cash or you're trying to find like a small business loan or whatever and you resell the car, like you know that you will be able to pay everything and get rid of the car. But if you get a sedan, a SUV, brand new, and, and then you say, like, I don't want to, you're screwed. Tired. Uh, is there anything, any question that I didn't ask? Is there anything that you would like to add that uh, I forgot to ask? No, like I feel like how I say, like, like for all the people that is watching you, like, if you want to start doing this, like, just know that you want to put, you need to put a lot of hours. Like, it's not how it used to be before, like, the economy is getting bad. Now, like, you're going to be, you, if you want to make money, you're going to have, you're going to be working at least 10, 12 hours a day or probably more. I know people, they work 15 hours a day. So, just have that in mind. And the car doesn't matter. Like, it's just, the driver mm -hmm. like just try it from start from the scratch get a nice car like this one the xts is a nice car like you could like this seller on the market that you could buy for a good price and you start with this car and like see how it goes you know like just work hard and and be disciplined and that's it yeah and uh it it all means that this business is not for part-time job no <laughs> this is if you want to do it full throttle yeah because like how i say like you're gonna pay you're gonna be paying for a commercial insurance so you can do this as a part-time like it doesn't make any sense and especially when you start you're gonna be paying a lot of money so and that was the main reason that uh, i sold the car and uh, not doing anymore so kevin it was nice talking to you yeah, the same bro the same and i'm uh, glad that this uh, beautiful car of mine has a new good uh, owner yeah. who will take care of it. Yeah, I will. <laughs> yeah, and I hope that it will serve you well. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope that transmission doesn't break down until 100,000 miles. Not yet. I, yeah, <laughs> I hope that it will go a lot more than that Yeah, yeah because yeah. I uh, truly took care, care of this car. I didn't drive it a lot, so I put around 20,000, 20, 25,000 miles on yeah. it. Yeah. It, it is not that much, but I hope that it will serve you well, and uh, I'll miss it. <laughs> you said you could call me and say, yeah. oh, Kevin, I, I miss the car. Can I drive it for a day? I said, yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. So. All right. <laughs> but I guess I will, the next car, the next great car I want to buy, it, it will be hybrid. So and the car that I drive is a hybrid. And, uh, oh, yeah. The, the it, uh, yeah, yeah, camera hybrid. And uh, from now on, 
any type of car that I want to buy, it should be hybrid at least, if it's a four actually. You know which one is a nice, like if you want to start in this business, like the Tesla Y. Tesla it's, not, Y. it's not an expensive car, it's like 40 something, and it's a nice car and you could do Uber Black and all that. Maybe in the future they'll add it for SUV too. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, because uh, Lincoln MKT is, it is similar to that. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. have that much of sitting in the mm, back. No, it's it, just a, a tiny run in the trunk. Yeah, tiny run in the trunk. All right, Kevin, thank you. You're welcome, man.